you are, you are able to share your screen. Your screen is. Try to share your screen again. Me? Uh, no, I still cannot see your screen yet. Okay. You're able to see the share button, the green color at the center? Yeah. Okay, let me start this webinar, yeah? Good evening, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar, How Much is Too Much? Negative Effect of Screen Time on Children and Teens. Thank you for taking time to be with us. I am Ali from Nafil Academy. We at Nafil Academy deliver high quality continuing professional education courses and content for dental surgeons and dental sports staff. Today, we are partnering with Nafil Counseling to bring you this webinar. Before we begin our webinar, there are a few points I would like to share. This webinar will be recorded. If you want to share this recording with your friends and family, please visit Nafil Academy YouTube channel. Please feel free to post any question at any time in a QA uh, section. Our speaker will do her best to answer all your questions at the end of the webinar. Our speaker, Sahira Masood, is the principal counselor at Nafil Counseling. She has master's degree in professional counseling and works with adults couples and family on a broad range of mental health conditions such as stress, anxiety, depression, and bipolar disorder. Without further ado, Zahira Masood. Thank you, Ali. Uh, a very good evening to everyone. Thank you for joining me here today in another webinar on our parenting series. So how much is too much negative effects of screen time on children and teenager? Um, I'm Zahira, Principal Counselor with Nafil Counseling. Just a little bit of a background about me. Before I joined Nafil, I was previously a school counselor and a therapist specializing in cognitive behavioral therapy. During my time in school, I've worked closely with students, parents, school staff to support students' mental health and social emotional development. Okay, so like, uh, like what Ali just mentioned, right? Uh, there will be a question and answer towards the end of the webinar. I'll try to un uh, answer uh, as much as I could, but right now um, you guys can just uh, post up your questions Questions pertaining to the topic as we go along. Okay, uh, I'll also like to highlight that this webinar today is meant uh, as a guide to share some of the strategies on how we can promote healthy screen time for our children. Uh, most of these resources are readily available online, but you can also reach out to me if you need any information of what is being shared today. Okay, so let's begin. Uh, here are the topics uh, that I will be covering today. Okay, uh, negative effects of excessive screen time on mental health, tips to reduce screen time, establishing guidelines at home with devices, and how can parents support their children and teens with healthy screen habits? Okay, so... The negative effects of excessive screen time on mental health. It's interesting how we are all so disconnected in this disconnected digital world. Let that statement sink in for a bit, okay? As you can see everywhere around us, people are glued to their mobile phones, looking at their emails, social media, or maybe watching a movie. 
how many times have a stranger look at you, uh, wish you good morning, or just simply smile at you to acknowledge your presence? Hardly, hardly right? So we are more connected than ever with, you know, uh, with more people and uh, getting feeling very lonely and anxious and depressed. Uh, online interactions simply isn't as satisfying as offline interaction. We are so disconnected from the present moment, but available online. Sad to say, it has somewhat become a norm. Since the pandemic hit us, many of us, including myself, have spent a lot of time on the digital space. Uh, whether it's Zoom calls, meetings, watching social media or Netflix shows, and so on. Uh, some, I mean, all of us are just guilty in some form or another, right? Where we are watching screens uh, a lot more than what we used to be. But what is all that screen time doing to our brains? And could it be an impact that could be long-lasting, especially for children? Uh, today's topic is very relatable to all of us, especially parents with young children and teenagers. Screen time these days seems to be a non-stop stimulation in an infinite virtual world. Everything is kind of transformed into this 2D space uh, our brains and are somewhat addicted to the screen. Uh, the children mostly are susceptible to it. Okay, so if you can recall when we when they first started off with remote learning during pandemic, the virtual world began for them. Then it spiraled into watching videos on YouTube or playing games. Then it just became ever so often and there was no end to it. I'm sure all this sounds familiar to you. The other one would be parents are also seen uh, giving mobile devices to kids as early as two to five years old to calm them down during a stressful episode in the train or maybe just to entertain them during that train ride or during outings. Sometimes it is also to juggle their own needs while doing so. This is the only way to keep them occupied. I know it works. We are all guilty of this. Screens somehow have the power to captivate children's attention in a way almost nothing else does, allowing us parents to have that a little bit space to breathe, right? But what is the impact of screens on that young brains and how much screen time should they be exposed to? What it does is that the brains are wired to keep watching or binging. Um, this activates the reward center found in the midbrain where dopamine is released and sent to our nucleus accumbens in the basal ganglia. What it does is that it taps into the more survival and pleasure-based center of the brain. That's where it drives us to watch the next episode after another. On the other hand, uh, the prefrontal cortex is where the more rational part of you that tries to reason uh, it out tells you to stop that binging uh, and steps in to tell the brain that you need to sleep or you probably should turn off the screen right now, right? So now this will be a constant battle between the immediate pleasure and the self-control making us pretty exhausted at the end of it. I'm sure many of us have experienced this. This is detrimental, especially to children. Studies show that uh, children, the longer the amount of time that they spend on their screens, their social emotional development may be impacted. Uh, a study that was done by American Journal of Diseases of Children, increased use of mobile devices for calming children between the age of three to five years old was found to be associated with decreased executive functioning and increased emotional reactivity. What this means is that the findings of these studies suggest that young children with higher surgency, the frequent use of devices for calming uh, them down should be avoided. Uh, another study that was done by Patricia Cole, uh, one of the world's leading brain scientists, and runs experiments on more than 4,000 babies each year. And what they discovered is that 
uh, little babies under a year old do not learn from a machine based on the several brain scans that they took on a computer. Even if you show them captivating videos, the difference in learning is extraordinary. You get a genius learning from a live human being and you get zero learning from a machine. Perhaps that's why WHO recommends no screen time for babies under two and no more than one hour screen time a day for those aged two to four. Uh, I also wanted to share a, sh a personal experience of mine as a mom. I noticed that my child too had struggled with the impact of excessive screen time during the pandemic. Uh, during that time, our children were stuck at home, right? And the only way of communicating to the outside world was that virtual space. The isolation and not being around friends have impacted them greatly than what we think it, it, it was, right? Okay, so what I saw that took a toll on her where she spent a lot more time on her devices as a way to stay up to date or just connect with others. But that wasn't enough, of course, because of that isolation and that loneliness, it spiraled into other things such as watching movies, YouTube on her laptop and constantly being on social media. It was tough as at that point, there was no other outlet for her to get that kind of interaction to the outside world. And that was the only solution to that isolation. Uh, my girl is usually a calm and happy girl who is able to regulate her emotions well, but I noticed an immediate shift in her behavior. She was lethargic, irritable, moody, and was dysregulated when she was not uh, having the adequate amount of sleep compared to her regular self. So according to Mayo Clinic, uh, excessive screen time in kids has been linked to a loss of social skills, behavioral problems, insomnia, obesity, and even um, violence or aggression. Uh, when in a social setting, our kids get to experience the connection with others through body languages, facial expression, using the five senses to help them respond appropriately in a social setting. But on a virtual platform, these cues are missed and the brains had to adjust to the digital world where the brain had to work harder around it uh, with disrupted conversation, exaggeration in facial expression, and lack of eye contact. Uh, aside from that, uh, some parents have also shared with me that at that point of time, working from home has blurred the boundaries and really you know, they themselves ended up in their own screen images and work. Uh, that they were struggling to balance their own screen time and their children's. So yes, know that you're not alone, okay? A lot of parents do struggle with these to impose healthy limits on themselves too. The average adult spends over 11 hours per day behind the screen. Uh, it has been an arduous experience, especially given that uh, the fact that internet became a vital link to the outside world. It is important to understand how much screen time can be harming everyone in the whole family. Whether you keep your TV on all the time or the whole family just sits around staring at their smartphones, too much screen time can definitely be harmful. The impact of screen time on children's mental health has been debate, a debated topic uh, among those who study the subject and as our reliance on screen only continues to increase. Um, so the research has shown that elementary or primary uh, school age children who watch TV or use computer more than two hours per day are more likely to have emotional, social and attention problem. Uh, here are some of it that I'll be sharing with you. The first one is behavioural problem. They found a link between certain type of behavioural problems in children under 12 with greater amounts of screen time. The problems included internalising behaviour issues such as feelings of anxiety, depression and externalising behaviour problems like uh, exact. Uh, aggression, inattention, 
or showing of defiance, okay? So like what I mentioned earlier, the exciting nature of screen time can trigger the release of dopamine, right? A feel-good neurotransmitter that makes us associate screens with pleasure and therefore uh, something we want to spend more time with. And while pretty much all screen content is intended to capture your attention, other mediums such as video games that have more captivating and impressive uh, graphics and reward-based stories appeal much more to that dopamine rush. So when the game stops, so does the dopamine release. And for some children, um, you know, not having the ability to control that can result in a irritability. Okay, so the next one would be social skills. With increased use of technology, children might not be uh, adequately developing their social skills. This can lead to more children being socially awkward, withdrawn, shy, or intimidated by social situations. Uh, they might not know how to engage with other kids. Developing social skills takes practice, and if technology is often in the way, there are fewer opportunities for kids to develop these skills. Okay, um, this can be very relatable to all of us. Children might get used to, you know, being alone, confined in their room where they're fully immersed in their devices and the lose of desire to even engage with their parents. Uh, I'm sure many of you parents understand this. Um, they, they are not able to, you know, engage with you or, you know, friends outside the internet. The virtual world has become something that they are so familiar with that uh, often this virtual world reality um, is more appealing and entertaining to the physical reality. Okay, uh, the next one, number four, would be ability to focus. For children to be successful, they need to learn how to concentrate and focus, okay? Uh, children who spend a lot of time using devices might have a reduced attention span and ability to focus due to their reliance on technology. Um, so technology can potentially uh, influence the child's developing brain and problem-solving skills. What it does is that it, the screens hijack the attention span. For instance, the child might be reliant on a device to solve problems for them rather than using their own brains uh, you know, with neural connections to work through a problem and find solution. This is evident in classroom these days when teachers are opting for shorter lesson plans to accommodate students becoming easily distracted. Okay, uh, the next one, number five, would be health problems. Too much engaging in sedentary activity just by being in their, cooped up in their room with their devices, uh, such as watching TV or playing video games, can be a risk factor for them to become overweight. The lack of exercise due to just being trapped inside their rooms can cause that weight gain. If young children are constantly being stimulated by screen, they often forget how to rely on themselves or others for entertainment. This leads to frustration and hinders imagination, impedes creativity and motivation to even step out and do uh, probably other activities such as cycling or running, you know, in physical activities that can increase increase uh, their well-being, right? So um, number six would be sleep problems. Although many parents use TV to unwind, I know all of us do this by looking and scrolling all the time before bedtime. Uh, screen times, uh, you know, using that screen time before bed can backfire. The blue light that emitted from the screen shut down the pineal gland that releases melatonin, which is a natural hormone that induces sleep. Uh, so therefore, it interferes with the sleep cycle in the brain and can lead to insomnia if kids use their devices before bedtime. This could also lead to reduced uh, sleep quality, 
affecting their overall uh, well-being and immune system. Okay, number seven is dangerous browsing. I know there's so much information available on internet these days and it's difficult for parents to monitor what their children are exposed to, including inappropriate content or interactions with strangers. Uh, but poorly managed screen use can also desensitize children to graphic content. Uh, in other words, um, that initial revolution uh, one feels when a person see uh, an animal being hurt or injured will decrease over time with multiple exposure to violence. Children's brains are like sponges. They absorb everything around them. This can lead to more acting out or in hostility and violence and increased appetite where there's increased appetite uh, for that kind of content. And eventually they may imitate what they see on TV. Okay, number eight would be uh, screen time interferes with empathy. Okay, believe it or not, uh, research has shown that screen time inhibits young children's ability to read faces, learn social and learn social skills. The two key factors needed to develop empathy. So face-to-face -face interactions. Uh, are the only way young children learn to understand non-verbal cues and interpret them. Kids learn empathy by watching their parents. We are pre-wired to learn it with specializing learning cells in our brain called mirror neurons. These mirror neurons are part of motor neurons that allows us to move facial muscles, expressing emotions. Uh, another way screen use interferes with empathy is by encouraging self-centeredness, okay? Uh, what social media does is that uh, it, be, it promotes the obsession with self. Uh, so by allowing the user to edit and correct their image to a point uh, where there's false narration about uh, perfection, right? So for many teens that struggle with the perfect virtual selves to live up to, uh, where their you know, non-virtual selves often fall short of expectation. So this can cause us to avoid a non-virtual interaction and prefer screen and preferred screen interactions. Okay, so um, a Harvard neuroscientist who does studies uh, the impact of neglect on children's brains said that until babies develop language and communication, uh, communication, the non-verbals is what they depend on heavily, looking at your face and deriving meaning from that face. Is the person happy with me? Are they upset with me? That two-way interaction between children and adult caregivers is critical in a uh, part of we you know that developing brain uh, therefore exposure to screen reduces babies or children's ability to read human reaction and control their frustration so you know that's where they find difficulty in developing empathy okay so let's move on to you know, tips to reduce screen time. Uh, that being said, setting limits on uh, devices for kids isn't always easy, right? Uh, in today's screen field world. Here are 10 tips uh, I'd like to share uh, for parents to use to decide how much screen time is reasonable for their kids. The first one and foremost, I would say is model healthy electronic use. Okay, parents and caregivers need to be the role models of screen use for their kids. Before you binge watch your net favorite Netflix series, remember that you are setting an example for your kids with your own time spent in front of the screen. Keeping the TV on for background noise all the time or scrolling through your phone anytime you have a spare minute may not be modeling the screen-related behavior that you hope to see in your children. Telling your child to turn off his video games while you are sitting in front of the TV won't do you any good. So it's important for you to set you know, healthy limits on 
uh, your electronics use for your own sake as well for your child's sake. I know that most of the conversations uh, about the dangers of uh, screen time focus on children, but it is important to recognize that adults may experience many of the same harmful effects like obesity and sleep problems. But even if you're not experiencing any of these, um, it could be also harming your relationship with your child. Uh, believe it or not, digital devices can harm relationships. Okay, a survey that was done in 2015, one third of children reported feeling unimportant when parents look at their smartphones during meals or even during playtime. You may think that replying to a quick text message may seem harmless to you, but it could be sending the wrong message to your child um, that your phone is more important than they are. Another study suggests that uh, giving your child in interrupted uh, care by repeatedly checking your smartphone could also affect his development and increase chances of developing mental health problems like depression and anxiety. Okay, so the number two would be educate yourself on electronics. Okay, today's kids are so tech savvy. Most of them more uh, are more advanced and they know more about technology than most adults do. So parents, you need to stay up to date to the latest apps, games, social media platforms, and trends. For example, you can't teach your child about the risk of social media unless you understand the dangers yourself. Likewise, you wouldn't be you know, able to prevent them from consuming certain type of media such as violent video games if you don't have an understanding how these forms of media are rated. Um, okay, so number three would be create technology-free zone. Uh, establish zones in your house where devices are simply not allowed. Uh, one example is your home's dining room or kitchen, which you could keep reserved for having me meals and meaningful family conversations with your children. Number four, set aside times to unplug. Um, it could be a specific time for your whole family to unplug from all their devices. Example, dinner time or an hour before bedtime. Uh, if you all agree to set aside your devices, it gives you more family uh, time and the opportunity to spend thoughtful and quality moments together. So while establishing your own family rules, you might want to include to curb screen time, say for example, no digital devices during family meals, no electronics use during fun family nights, no screen time in the car, no screens allowed in bedrooms, you know, here are just some examples. Uh, in addition, I would recommend another technique uh, that you might want to consider to, uh, to do an occasional digital detox for the whole family. Uh, you can create a screen-free night once a week or commit to unplugging once a weekend every month. It could be good for the entire family, uh, physical, emotional health as well as it helps with strengthening bonds uh, and relationship. You might want to consider doing a family detox during uh, you know, a longer one during school break or vacation. Okay, so number five would be uh, use of parental controls. I find this especially helpful for primary school going kids. Okay, uh, these are tools that you can use to protect your kids from excessive explicit content on the internet and on TV. Most routers, web browsers, TVs have parental control uh, that you can set up to filter or block any unwanted content. If your kids have smartphones, there are also built-in settings or apps you can download that allow to create content filters. Um, many, many also allow you to block specific website, web searches, or even keywords. Some of the recommended ones which are free would be Google Family Link, uh, Android Parental Control App, 
uh, kits, logger, phone monitoring app, and so on. Or you can use our trusted friend, Google, uh, to help you research on what's the best app out there. Alternatively, uh, you may also want to reach out to me for some of these resources. Okay, so number six would be sharing of password. I know, um, I know uh, this next point can be quite challenging, uh, but you might, you know, um, I think I didn't state it there, but you might want to consider asking your kids for their password to their online or social media accounts. If you intend to install parental controls and privacy filters in these digital devices, explain to your child why it's necessary. Have an open discussion with your child on harmful internet content, such as inappropriate videos that may have pervasive adult content, violence or religious radicalization. Remind your child not to you know, chat with strangers online. He or she should inform you if there, there are online messages, posts or photos that make him or her feel uncomfortable. Uh, provide the research uh, articles for them on facts um, that is connected to these uh, harmful content and um, make sure that they are informed and educated on this. Uh, illustrate with an example of what could happen if his or her password are known to others. Reach an agreement to be kept informed of your child's password until he or she reaches a certain age or are able to show you good or healthy online behaviors. Kids don't always have the maturity necessary to handle online interactions and can also be vulnerable to cyberbullying. So you need to discuss the options as a family, uh, but it will be entirely up to you as a parent to figure out what's the best way to help protect your child while still allowing them to have some sort of privacy and autonomy. Okay, um, number seven is explain why you're limiting screen time. Uh, if your kids understand the reason behind it, um, you know, that screen times have their downsides, then they are much more likely to follow the rules you set. If your kids think you're being unreasonable or being mean, uh, they might be more likely to resist or break the rules that you're trying to enforce. Encourage your child to uh, participate in conversations with the pros and cons of electronics based on what's appropriate for your child's age. Explain why violent video games and TV shows and movies can be harmful. If your kids use the internet, uh, make sure to have that conversation with them about the dangers of online predators. Uh, every family member should be included in these discussions uh, about screen time and part of creating that awareness and a set of boundaries that everyone can follow. The number eight is encourage other activities. We know that there are all sorts of apps, games, and um, devices and content that are available out there that makes it easy for kids to become reliant on their electronic for entertainment. Encourage your kid to seek out and get involved in uh, activities that don't need these devices like playing outside, reading a book, or even digging out a um, board game are some of the ideas. You could also encourage your kids to participate and come up with their own ideas, what kind of activities they would like to do uh, as part of family bonding. It can help to establish or enforce, you know, certain kind of schedule or rules that your home might want to follow. Okay, so uh, number nine would be make screen time a privilege. You might decide to, you know, make it a privilege rather, rather than a right, their rights. Okay, so uh, when facing negative consequences of their bad behavior, uh, or actions, you may want to consider using a form of discipline that involves taking, uh, you know, 
these privileges right uh, which is their devices okay so maybe that is uh, you know um one of the things that you might want to do to help them uh you know encourage that these uh, devices are a privilege and they should uh, be accountable uh, if they you know if they have any kind of bad behaviors um, or actions uh, so i i feel like whenever you have a set limit on how much screen time is allowed don't allow kids to have that extra time on their devices as a reward instead uh, stick to a a, lim a daily limit that offers uh, you know free or low cost rewards to reinforce uh, positive behaviors, encouraging your kids to buy into less screen time and screen free zones will be much easier if you engage with them in a positive, fun, and authentic way. Uh, they are more likely to resort to screen time as a form of escapism if you're constantly reminding them about how messy their rooms are or about how they haven't done this assignment. Uh, uh, right or on time, set clear, consistent rules and expectations. Uh, inconsistency can lead to intermittent uh, reinforcement, which maintains and increases unwanted behavior. So making it clear to your kids when they are allowed on screens and when they are not, it will help to clarify your own expectations as well as turn and uh, it can turn to prevent arguments and power struggles. Okay, so the last one would be keep your child's bedroom screen free. Uh, you won't be able to monitor their screen use if you allow them to use their devices uh, in their rooms or anything that is out of your sight, right? For this reason, you might want to make it a rule that TVs, video games, computers are not allowed in their bedrooms. This also includes handheld devices or phones that your kids might be tempted to use like late at night, which could interfere with their sleep. Okay, so let's move on to our next point. How to establish guidelines at home with devices for your child. Okay, you don't necessarily need to set strict limits on the time your children use their dev digital devices, but you should start examining the big picture and the role these electronics are playing in everyone's life. Number one, I think which is really important is consider the habits that your family has fallen into. Do you watch TV while you're eating dinner? Do you stare at your phones when you're in a restaurant or family gatherings or even an important uh, you know, family event? Uh, do you bring the phone to your bathroom uh, and spend hours on it? So consider these habits you know, that your family has fallen into. Uh, the other one would be examine your child's media habits too. Do they watch TV before they go to bed? Are they using their devices uh, whenever you are in the car or maybe using their devices first thing in the morning? Uh, it's good to examine these things. You want to me, uh, you want to establish some sort of ground rules for the whole family, like some of the examples mentioned earlier, such as no electronics while eating dinner or no electronics on Saturdays. Those type of rules can help ensure everyone is establishing a healthier relationship with their devices. Okay, what is okay and what is not okay to share online? Set guidelines um, on what your child can post, right? Uh, children should not share information such as home addresses or names of family members that can allow strangers to locate him or her. Uh, explain the need to set their accounts to private and only to accept requests from people that they know well. Highlight to them that people who claim to know um, People who claim to know their friends uh, can, can be other strangers too and remind them uh, that, you know, whatever they post online um, can be a window for others to, to pick into their personal lives. So discuss with your family on the need to set 
up guidelines for every family member on content or what can be posted online. Make it clear to your child that digital footprints cannot be erased. To reinforce this point, do an, a simple uh, test or experiment by googling or searching your name online and you know suss out your own digital footprints as an example. Okay, uh, you may want to have special consideration for children on who are younger than 18 months, use of screen media other than video chatting should be discouraged. Meanwhile, parents of children 18 to 24 months of age um, who want to introduce digital media should choose high quality programming or apps um, they can use together with their children because uh, this is how toddlers learn best. Letting children use media alone should be avoided at all costs. Uh, for children uh, older than two years, media limits are very appropriate. Limit screen use to no more than an hour a day um, of high quality programming. Co-view or co-play with your children and find other activities to do together that are healthy for the body and mind, such as reading, playing together or going outside. Uh, parents, please don't use technology as an emotional pacifier. Media can be very effective in keeping kids calm and quiet, but it should not be the only way uh, they to, to learn to calm down. Okay, So children need to be taught how to identify and handle strong emotions, come up with activities to manage boredom and calm down, uh, through breathing, talking about ways to solve the problem and finding other strategies for channeling emotions. But if you have to rely on screens at certain moments, just make sure to control the quality of shows that they see and engage um, with them while they are watching. The benefits of limiting and eliminating screen time in these early moments will last a lifetime. Okay, so how can parents support your children and teens with healthy screen habits? Remember, it's okay for your teens to be online. In today's world, online relationships are part of typical adolescent uh, development. Um, social media can support teens as they explore and discover more about themselves. Uh, and their place in the grown-up world. Just be sure that your teen is behaving appropriately in both the real and online worlds. Many teens need to be reminded that the platform's privacy settings do not make things actually private and that their images, thoughts and behaviours uh, teens share online will instantly become a part of their digital footprint. Keep lines of communication open and clear and let them know uh, that you are there if they have any questions or concerns. Warn them about the importance of privacy and the dangers of predators and sexting. Children need to know that once content is shared with others, there will be uh, no way to delete it or remove it completely. And uh, this includes texting of inappropriate pictures. They may also um, they may also uh, not know about you know uh, how to choose uh, the usage of privacy settings and they need to be warned that sex offenders uh, often use social networking, chat rooms, emails and online gaming to content uh, to contact and exploit children. Uh, remember, kids will be kids. Uh, they will make mistakes while using devices or the media. Try to handle these errors with empathy and turn those mistakes into a teachable moment. Okay, But some indiscretion such as sexting, uh, bullying, posting of self-harm images uh, may be a red flag and that hints to you know, troubles ahead. Parents must observe closely 
and carefully that their children's behavior. Look out for changes such as loss of interest in activities that they used to enjoy or big changes in their moods. Uh, watch them when it is, um, you know, how they are struggling to put away uh, their phones and engage with people around them. If needed, enlist supportive professional help such as counsellors or family pediatrician. So check up on children regularly, but without sneaking around behind their backs. One way would be asking children open-ended questions like, how do they feel when they're not on their phones? Are they feeling stressed? Are they feeling relief? Or having fear of missing out? Because uh, kids are undergoing huge changes all the, all the time at this age between um, 10 to 14, behavioral changes can um, probably not necessarily be related to their smartphones, uh, but it's good to have regular conversations with them to support them through that transition. Okay, so be open to changing uh, their agreement too uh, and listening to reasons for more flexibility and freedom. By 15 or 16, uh, teens should have uh, some expectations what they want to do with their phones in private. That doesn't mean that uh, their education stops, so continue to educate them on the harmful effects and keep asking questions and making sure that your kids uh, know that they can come up to you uh, about any phone related issues uh, or any kind of um, bullying that happens online. Uh, if it's a challenge to talk to them, I know this happens with a lot of teenagers, it is very difficult for parents to talk to them, texting would be another uh, option. The adolescent's brain continually changes and rewires itself in response to daily experience and that adaptation continues to their mid-20s. Okay, so in some digital devices are integral part of our world today. The benefits of these devices, if used moderately and appropriately, can be a great uh, source uh, to any one of us, but research has shown that face-to-face -face time with family, friends, and teachers plays a pivotal and even more important role in promoting children's learning and healthy development. Keep the face-to-face -face, uh, upfront and don't let it get lost behind the stream of media and tech. Parents, schools, pediatricians, professionals, and uh, researchers need to continue to pay close attention to, to and intervene with screen time in structured and consistent ways across all domains to foster healthy biopsychosocial development of our children. If you're a parent and struggling with your own uh, mental health, or you're concerned about your child's mental health, Nuffield Counseling is here to provide confidential support 24-7. Call us for a free 10-minute consultation today to understand your mental health needs. Uh, with that, I'll be ending the webinar and it's time for Q&A. Okay, uh, one question that uh, I've got from a parent is, uh, is that is extra screen time okay uh, if it's spent using educational content? Um, I know it's, you know, while it's great to give your child as many educational opportunities as possible, uh, spend you know, time spent on educational games and TV shows is still considered screen time so it's still taking you know it's still taking away time that could be used for real world educational experiences as well as physical exercise so um, there are you know also a few things to keep in mind regarding educational content first is not to use app and game or video that is labeled as educational truly is so you should try using the media uh, first to check out uh, to make sure whether is productive or age appropriate that 
it falls in line with your own personal values and uh, goals that you have set for your family. And, um, you know, that it's not overloaded uh, with distracting uh, bells and whistles and images. Uh, second, remember that while these programs may give a different perspective or extra learning opportunity, they do not replace physical homework. So in short, do not be too quick to trust educational content and uh, make sure uh, that, you know, they are still involved in their own physical homework. Okay. Any other questions? Um, okay, another one I think uh, that is, you know, through this whole webinar, right? Um, you know, some parents do ask uh, whether they, their child should be kept away from screens as much as possible. Um, you know, of course, I would say yes. You know, uh, the less time looking at screens, uh, it is better for their mental health. This is common misconception shared by many parents in most uh, cases. Children over 24 months do uh, also benefit from screen time at this age uh, where they, you know, where they start to show learning tendency and digital content, different digital content such as, you know, some kids like to watch Peppa Pig, this and that, you know, it, it, uh, it does provide ample opportunities for their, the child to learn and absorb the information. But of course, you know, for children at that age, please remit the screen use to under one hour, one hour uh, because of the uh, attention span um, that children usually have during those using those kind of content for learning. Uh, so it's good to, you know, just the way you treat food by planning set you know, set times throughout the day, the more and more importantly, sticking to them, uh, be consistent about, you know, uh, using these devices for educational purpose as well. Uh, so make sure it doesn't interfere with their sleep, exercise, social interactions, and other important activities in the young person's life. Okay, so that brings us to the end of our webinar. Um, I hope uh, you all had find something uh, meaningful and insightful through this webinar itself. Uh, if you do have any questions pertaining to this webinar today, please uh, do not hesitate to reach out to me by, uh, you know, WhatsApping us or emailing us uh, on... A, on the uh, webinars that's being shared today. Uh, till then, I'll see you all in our next um, session and our next series uh, next month. See you. Have a good night. Thank you all for joining me here. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.